Chapter 26 The Nursing Home On the following morning, when Andrew was about to visit some of his poor patients, Mrs Lawrence telephoned and asked him, in a most friendly manner, to call on Toppy again. Andrew went straight to the house. Here he met Mr Leroy, who looked at him quickly and said, Listen, Doctor, I'm in a hurry. You're a clever young man. Well then, cure my girl. Stop all her stupid nonsense, her crying and shouting about nothing. Give her the best treatment. I can afford it. Goodbye. When Andrew went upstairs, he found Mrs Lawrence waiting for him outside Toppy's room. Every day, Francis Lawrence was present at the time of his visit. Her quiet, gentle manner attracted Andrew. Although he did not realise it, she soon began to influence some of his actions. She suggested that he should buy a car for his work. Andrew made no mention of this to Christine, but he began to ask himself how any doctor could develop a high-class practice without a car. A man in his position must not be seen walking down the street, carrying his own bag. He could not afford to buy a car in one payment, but he could spread out his payments over two or three years. Any garage would agree to that arrangement. Three weeks later, Andrew drove home in an expensive new car. He ran into the house and called out, Christine! Christine! Come and see something! He had meant to surprise her, and he succeeded. Andrew! Is this ours? Oh, what a beauty! He smiled at her. Step inside, lady, and I'll take you for a drive. She admired the car again and again as he drove her through the streets. They went out together so rarely now that she made the most of every minute. She said happily, Now perhaps we can drive into the country on Sundays. Oh, that would be so nice. The suggestion annoyed Andrew. Oh, all right, I suppose so, he answered. But we can't make a habit of driving into the country. The car is for work, not for pleasure. They drove home in silence. On Thursday, as he was leaving the Leroy's house, Andrew met Freddy Hampson. Hello, Hampson, he said. Freddy looked at him in surprise. Why, hello, what are you doing here? Patient, Andrew answered, pointing towards the house. I'm attending Leroy's daughter. Leroy? Delighted at Freddy's surprise, Andrew proudly put his hand on the door of his new car and asked, Which way are you going? Can I drive you anywhere? I'm going to Ida Sherrington's nursing home, said Freddy. You can drive me there if you like. As they drove to the nursing home, both men were silent. Hampson was thinking. He had given Andrew a warm welcome when he came to London, because he had hoped that Manson might occasionally ask for his opinion about a case, for which he would be able to charge the patient three pounds. But now this surprising change in his old friend, his new clothes, the car, and his mention of Leroy, gave Hampson reason to believe that Andrew might be more helpful to him than he had expected. Come in and meet Ida, he suggested when they reached the nursing home. Her home is one of the worst in London, but she makes a lot of money. She's a person worth knowing. Yes? Come in with me and see my patient, old Mrs. Rayburn. Ira and I are doing a few tests on her. Come and examine her chest. That would please her. And she'd pay you five pounds. What? You mean... But what's the matter with her chest? Nothing, Freddy smiled. Don't look so surprised. That's how we work here, Ivory, Deedman and I. You really ought to join up with us. The success of our system would surprise you. Andrew got out of the car and looked at the tall, cold building. He then turned his head and listened to the noise of the cars and the buses in the street. He asked himself 
how any sick person could find peace here. Andrew mentioned this to Hampson as they entered the building. Yes, it is noisy, Freddy agreed. But the area is very convenient for us. That's all that matters. He led Andrew into a small office, where a fat woman with a red face sat at a desk. Good morning, Ida, Freddy called out. I brought Dr. Manson to see you. Ida greeted Manson in a friendly manner. After they had talked together for a few minutes, Freddy interrupted them. Take a good look at him, he said to Ida. He'll soon be sending you a lot of patients. Hampson laughed and then led Andrew upstairs to see Mrs. Rayburn. She was a woman of about sixty. Freddy sat on her bed and talked to her. He told her that Mr. Ivory would call next day to tell her about the result of his important tests, and he asked her to allow Dr. Manson, who had made a special study of lungs, to examine her chest. Mrs. Rayburn was delighted at the suggestion. She enjoyed the examination. She was a rich woman and liked to spend her money on her health. Heavens, Freddy said as they left the room. You've no idea how much money we have made from that old woman. Andrew did not answer. This place gave him a feeling of disgust. There was nothing wrong with the old lady, and Freddy's behaviour was shameful. He shook hands with Hampson and drove away. At the end of the month, when he received a cheque for five pounds from Mrs. Rayburn, he decided that he had been foolish to feel as he did. He had given her his services and had earned this payment. He accepted the cheque.